Hi everyone, this is Ben Lincoln from Legacy of Kane, The Lost Worlds. You're looking at a preview of the output of some software that I've been building for about four months. It converts model data from Soul Reaver for use in Blender, and it's based on the research and tools that ACR Hope, myself, and others have released over the years. Why have I been working on this tool when we have so much exciting deleted material from Soul Reaver to show off this year? Well, this tool is actually a big part of making it possible to do that effectively. The amount of material we'll be revealing in 2020 is too much for any one person to present by hand, so I need a software that I can point at an entire build of the game and have it generate results more or less automatically that we could then use in videos and on websites. Since it works with every version of Soul Reaver, we will be able to show in detail how the game evolved over time from early versions into the one that was eventually released. Converting the models into a standard format also means that fans can have fun exploring the game world from a new perspective themselves. If you watched the first preview of the toolchain output from December 2019, you might be thinking that the images you're seeing in this video are a lot more colorful, and you'd be correct. I've learned a lot in the process of making this toolchain. In December, I assumed that most of the color was from real-time lighting effects in the game engine, but as Acer Hode explained to me, nearly all of what look like lighting effects in Soul Reaver are actually vertex colors. Each vertex in the terrain models has two colors associated with it, one for the material plane in the game world and one for the spectral plane version of the same location. The game engine uses that information to apply additional color beyond what's in the model's texture maps, and the result is what you see on screen here and in the original game. One of the most dramatic examples of this technique is for the Movie 6 area, which was used to make one of the visions that Raziel sees near the end of the game. In the cinematic, it looks like a dark area with a beam of light illuminating the center. Here's that area, extracted from a prototype version of Soul Reaver, with only texture mapping performed. Here's the same area, but rendered with only the vertex colors. Finally, Here's the result when those two are combined. As I mentioned, vertex colors are also key to the appearance of the spectral realm. The tool chain can now output that version of the models and vertex colors in addition to the material plane. You did not survive the abyss, Raziel. I have only spared you from total dissolution. These gates twist space, laying a path across great spans. The old hunter has left me. No desire for blood. Your winds, though ruined, are not without purpose. Take hold of them as you leap, and they will carry you across this chasm. You've just seen some examples of in-game areas rendered in Blender, but one of the main reasons I wanted to make this tool chain was to show how everything fits together, and which parts were removed or changed as Soul Reaver was developed. This next set of clips will show off the way I've come up with for it to really make that clear even for people who haven't played the game in years or decades. Soul Reaver pioneered the idea of streaming the game world in as the player moved through it, to avoid loading screens like most games used to have in between levels. It was developed in the late 1990s, when game consoles had 4 to 8 megabytes of RAM, so the size of the pieces being swapped in and out of memory were much smaller than you'd see in a game today. Behind the scenes, the game engine identifies each of those pieces using a short name and a number. Different designers had different approaches, so in this case, you're looking at an area that the player probably thinks of as the Citadel, but which is internally identified as being made up of various city and tower pieces, as well as a few Morlock pieces that were repurposed from Tyrell's territory after that area was deleted from the game. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, one of my main goals was for the tool chain to be able to handle every version of Soul Reaver, so that I could show exactly how the game world changed as development progressed. I'm happy to say that it's now capable of handling every version that I know of, except for the Lighthouse demo. That one is from about a year before the game was released, and the file formats are different enough that it will be a while longer before this toolchain can do anything with it.
differences in the spectral versions of the game worlds aren't as obvious among this particular set of prototypes when zoomed out, so I'm just going to compare the spectral world in the prototype from 12 May 1999 with the final version of the game. Thanks for watching! I'm going to end with one of my favorite examples so far. The silenced cathedral is among the most complex areas in the final version of the game. Looking at it from outside, you can really see how everything fits together, as well as just how detailed it is when the camera zooms in.